Hey guys, uh, Mark here. Um, give me a few minutes while I try to figure some stuff out. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. All right. Been having some technical difficulties. Um, I'm not the best at this. But, uh, hopefully I can get it all figured out. How is everybody doing today? I'm trying to link my page. I don't know if this is even going to be possible, but... There, I can see myself. Let's see. <laughs> Share to page. Hey Ross. Hey Lisa. You guys hear me? Hello. Alright. I got it figured out. I do believe. Okay. So, as most of you know, um, today is 420, April 20th, 2017, and um, last year, we'll start 18 years ago, 18 years ago, um, I lost the most important human to ever walk the earth um, in a school shooting, um, and uh, I um it doesn't get any easier. Um with the movie and with everything else, uh it's still just as hard as it was um all these years ago. Um last year this time, uh a lot of you know I posted this a while back that uh early in the morning, um I was up for a few days doing drugs, um, doing speed, and I shot heroin in the morning because I was self-loathing and I was super depressed, and I pretty much OD'd, and um, I'm lucky to be here, but uh, I spent the next five days throwing up alone um, in a corner of a basement, a very shady place um, I was living in where I was at. Um, Nisi Davies, uh, one of the producers of I'm Not Ashamed, uh, kind of helped me through that time there, um, talking to me and being a light, um, reminded me constantly of, um, who I am, you know, and, uh, reminders of who Rachel was and wanted me to be. I'm sorry, I'm kind of out of it today, uh. I spent the earlier part of uh, today trying to throw some disc golf, which I failed to no avail. Um, sorry, I'm still trying to like link this to my page. Um, I just realized this is only to my friends and I get bad connection on my computer out here. So hi, Tobias. Hi, Samantha. Um, thank you. Um, for all your positivity and stuff. Um, it's good to be here. Um, I wanted to say since last year I made some pretty big changes, um, to say the least. Um, uh, instead of getting up a year ago and doing drugs and being alone, um, I woke up today and went to the gym and uh, I meditated, I worked out. Um, like I said, I tried to play some disc golf, but I got really big in my head, and I started just going for a walk and exploring tunnels because I'm kind of a weird guy like that. Um, now I'm sitting in the art studio. Um, I think I'm going to go try to get another disc game in, and I'm also going to go to her grave here in a little bit. Those of you who know where it's at, um, you might see me there. Um, but uh, I just wanted to share a few things out of her journal um, that I've never really shared before. 
after I get this linked here, so, you know, bear with me. Um, aw, Sarah, I'm glad you're here, too. You're wonderful. We need an adventure soon. What's up, Jims? Hi, Lindsay. Um, I'm glad you're here, too. Um, glad everybody made it. Sorry, I'm, I'm really, really dumb with, uh, this Facebook. You know, you think of, uh, all these brains in my head. Can you guys hear me all right? I think I got this figured out. It's going to be so amazing. All right. Share to page. <sighs> so. Well, Sarah, I'm always down to hang out, but uh, I'm never free. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. I think I did it. I think I did it. All right, all right. And it says it was shared successfully, so hopefully the people on my page can watch the video as well. Um, hello. Um, those of you who know me and don't know me, my name is Mark. Um, I go by Mark Alive as well. Alive is a, a name I got in the streets, a graffiti name, um, as I have been doing that for a very long time. Um, I stick to the legal stuff these days. Um, back in the day, I went by Mark Botterford, and that's who Rachel knew me by. It's my mom's maiden name. I also am Mark Pettit. Uh, in the movie I'm Not Ashamed, I'm Nathan Ballard. Played by the wonderful Ben Davies, who is very, very handsome. And when people that meet me, they're like, man, you are so good looking in the movie. What happened? It's like, I age, I guess. I'm still pretty. Um, Alright, so what I'm going to do is just share with you guys um, some of uh, what um, Rachel wrote to me uh, in the journals. And... Um, Um, all right, let's see. So this um, was me kind of being like self-loathing and down. And um, uh, if you guys don't know, uh, me and Rachel shared journals back when I was in ministry school. Um, it's kind of similar to what's in the movie, um, but they didn't really go into that I was in ministry school at the time where I was not allowed to talk to females uh, the first year which posed a problem and I almost didn't do it because me and Rachel were so close and such good friends. Uh, I didn't want to be away from her and whatnot, but uh, she convinced me to go anyway, and she gave me um, the very first notebook and said, hey, we see each other twice a week, we can write back and forth. And yeah, from there uh, we just, um, we would go back and forth with the journals and we would, um, be able to communicate and talk to each other. Kind of cheating, I know, but, uh, you know, uh, I am a man of character and integrity, so I did my best. Uh, so, um, I was just uh, really down and whatnot, and uh, just really, uh, this is something I struggle with constantly, and um, those of you who know me, um, every year I go through this phase where I kind of push people away, and um, I just have a hard time. Um, getting close to people, because uh, I've lost so many people. Uh, uh, my aunt just recently passed away, um, Helen Sneath, and um, it's a pretty rough death, uh, just because i um, stubborn, you know. Be close to the people, you know, that are in your life, because they're not here forever. All right, so, let's see, it was Tuesday at 1.07 a.m. I love her response, by the way. That's why I'm reading this. So, it says, I've been feeling kind of weird lately. I really miss having friends I hang with all the time. Today I looked around and realized I'm really lonely. But I've also been thinking, if people don't want to accept me for who I am, I don't need them anyway. I'm tired of everyone putting on this big face around me like they want to be my friend. And then if I call them to hang out, 
they act like they have other plans or they do say it's okay like they have to do something I just wish people would be more honest and tell me I'm sorry but I don't want to hang cause you're a weirdo or a freak I promise it would hurt a lot less I may be a weirdo or different but I have feelings too granted I was 19 or 18 when I wrote this so uh, don't judge me The my handwriting was very fancy as well uh, very bubbly so, just to let you know, I am 38 now, and I'm not as, uh, like 19. Alright. Uh, I may be a weirdo or different, but I have feelings too. But it's like nobody sees that or even cares. Us Christians are supposed to be like family, but people treat me like the complete stranger. And now that Dave and Mr. Ma is Mr. Mac Daddy... That was my old friend, Preppy Dave. Uh, I miss that dude. Um, <laughs> uh, he don't even talk to me now. Don't even try to tell me we need space either. But if he thinks that I use him for his car, that's a bunch of crap. And I wrote crap. Um, now he has his other friends to go to TNL and everybody's bad. It's fine. He has you. He don't need me. He has Sam and the rest of his friends. I'm sick of the fake people, I'm sick of these fake friendships, I may be different but I'm honest, I care, I'm real, and like it, so I'm just going to serve God. Do art, poetry, keep to myself, to heck with people. I actually said to heck with people. Funny, huh? Um, and so-called friends, please keep writing me because you're all I got. You may be distant in person, but at least you're honest. Please stay that way. Never be fake for anyone. So, <laughs> with age does come wisdom. You're absolutely right. And thank you for the prayers. They're much needed today. Thank you for all the love. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to look at this real quick. Everybody's so nice. It's been a very lonely, hard day. I, I kind of draw into myself, so I figured the best thing I could do is just share a little bit with you guys and um, not be such an introvert today. Um, and the last page of my little my thing it says, thank you for being the only real friend I got. Love you, Mark. And it had some little emo tears here, which, uh, let's see. I don't know if you can see that. P.S. Don't ever forget that you're my little sis. And that brings a smile, knowing that you care about me. Thank you. I also have little uh, clouds and whatnot. Oh, boy. So, those of you who can't read in cursive, evidently they don't teach that anymore. I completely agree. I agree with you, Samantha. Everybody does need a little kindness. All right, so I'm gonna read what Rachel wrote back to me. All right, 827, 10 p.m. That's, uh, I think that was nine, it was clearly 98, not 99. Um, all right, hey. Sorry, it's taken a while to write back. This is Rachel writing to me. Sorry, it's taken a while to write back. How are you doing now? Because I love you so much, I'm going to tell you two things. First, you always, always have me. I will never turn into a social plastic friend. I will always be here, and both me and God will love you enough to make up for any other friendships that have been lost. Now, before I go into the second thing, I want you to know that in certain areas, it is almost a responsibility to be accountable for each other. Being at that, we need to help each other by pointing it out, pointing out things. So I'm going to do that, but out of sheer love, 
say you look around you and feel like alone, it shouldn't be like that. Not because you have me, but because you have God. That puts you above most when it comes to being lonely. Second part, a lot of people are not going to accept you with your walk with God. Anyone of this world better not accept you. If they accept you, then you're in trouble. Our only acceptance should be in each other and Christ. Third, when you say no one cares, I can guarantee you that you are wrong on two occasions, me and God. Fourth, when it comes to Dave and others, you better care. Care for people and offer the love that was given to you by God. No matter what, what is the point of being a follower of Christ if we can't love and be like Christ? I'm going to say that again because that's very important. And I always, always think this. And this is how I live. Um, I see everybody equally. I don't see Christians. I don't see Muslims. I don't see Buddhists. I don't see... We are all one. We are all God's children. Um, those who know love know God. And Christ is my ultimate teacher um, and my ultimate influence, as he was Rachel's. Um, I'm thankful every day for the love and sacrifice that um, he gave us. But in reminder of that, we have to remember his life and that he loved everybody. He didn't sit there and say, Oh, oh, you're Muslim? Oh, I can't, I can't talk to you. You might be a terrorist, which is complete crap. Um, oh, you're, you're a Buddhist? Oh, you know, you don't know God. You know, like, that, that's not... It's not our place, you know. Our place is to simply show God's love through our actions. And like I posted the other day that um, our love is so much louder than our words will ever be. So just remember that when you're out there because this world's a crazy place right now. So what is the point of being a follower of Christ if we can't love and be like Christ? True 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 all right fifth let's see hi Kara hi Dre all right when you say that you are serving no one but God that has one problem God has called you to serve not only him but to his people as well I don't know this because I am a prophet or anything I know this because he is called all his servants to do this. We have to serve people to feel their needs. If we don't, what is going to attract him to God? What is going to attract him about God? Right? No matter what, you will always be a servant to those around you. And lastly, don't you ever, ever say to heck with people. She had to call me out. Oh, look at all these hearts. Um... Don't you ever, ever say to heck with people again. Do you know how powerful those words are? That is condemning whether you realize it or not. Well, I'm not trying to tear you down, so please don't get the wrong idea. I love you so, so much. With a little heart, okay. Seems harsh, right? The next page. She had to, you know, because she did come off kind of harsh, like real talk. It says, hey, Mark, I hope I didn't come off too harsh in my last letter. I wanted to be compassionate and helpful. I'm sorry to make this so short, but I have to go. Love always, Rachel Joy. So... Just, uh, yeah, sorry, I'm all caught up in the, the journal and these stupid little drawings and whatnot that, um, I used to have with her. I don't ever read this, by the way. Um, I gave these journals to her mom, I think the day after her funeral. Um, if you guys have seen the movie, Ben, that plays me, he, uh, 
he uh, used almost word for word what I said at the actual funeral. And those who saw the funeral, it was uh, CNN's most broadcasted event. Um, so I, I gave these to Rachel's mom, Beth, um, right after the funeral. Said, here, you should get them on your daughter, which I always... Rachel would be super mad at me, but look at all the good that's came about. Um, the movie, you know, she was a very wonderful portrayal of her and her love and kindness. Um, I'm definitely going to be reading more of these journals as we go here. I'm going to do this on my YouTube. Um, I will put a link up on my Facebook. Uh, I haven't really promoted it yet, but uh, I will be doing that shortly, and I will be rating this page for page with commentary and whatnot, uh, just so you guys can get to know Rachel a little better, you know, not the polished whatever, you know, it's going to be um, directly from me, you know, uh, I was one of her closest friends, and, um, you know, I think she'd want you guys to know her. <sighs> I want to thank everybody. Everybody's been hitting me up, um, saying they're praying for me and sending out love. Um, I haven't been very talkative. As you can tell, I'm just all over the place today. Um, let's see here. Let's see if I can find something better. Um, how's everybody doing today? She is, she is very, very inspiring still today, and uh, that's what keeps me going, to be honest. Um, I get hit up by at least 30 to 50 people a day from all over the world uh, telling me how inspiring um, Rachel has been to them, um, even 18 years later. Um, I, I wish I could say to you guys that... Um, I, you know, I, you know, I, if I could take it all back and, and take her place, that I wouldn't be selfish and want to do that. Uh, just because I love her so much, even today. And, uh, you know, I know she wouldn't want that, though, because of all the good that's going on. Um, let's see here. Thank you, Sarah, uh, for all your prayers and everything else. Uh, you're awesome. Oh, my cousin Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Thank you, Kara. Love you, too. And I'm trying to stay strong uh, every day, you know. Um, I'm all clean and sober for a year, which is amazing for me. Those of you who know me, um, I've done a little dabbling in drugs and fallen off the face of the earth. Uh, but, uh,. I am walking a much healthier and positive path today and trying to continue um, Rachel's amazing legacy um, and just honor her memory as I really didn't. I, I was really selfish for many years and um, to a lot of people, to a lot of good friends and uh, a lot of people that have known me. I was just very self-absorbed and very, um, I don't know, I've always been a good person but, you know, just... Uh, got caught up. That's awesome, Kaylee. She would be so happy to hear that. Oh, thank you, Sarah. You're my favorite cousin. Yay. Let's see. I guess I could read you something else. Um, oh, I do. I do remember you, Yanni. Hi, in Mexico. What's up, Joshua? Been a while. See, I'm just getting people talking now, so... If you guys got any questions uh, that you want answered, um, I'll do my best to answer. Just try to be respectful. Because um, today is definitely a hard day for me, every year. Thank you, Gabrielle. Um, I try to be that way. Um, I attend two churches. Uh, I'm about to start uh, 
meditation night, um, teaching people just to be still and know God, basically. Um, uh, in our society, we get caught up so much, we are so ahead of ourselves constantly that um, we're just never in the moment. And every time we do that, we rob ourselves of the present moment. And each moment's a gift. So um, I'm going to be starting something with that. Um, I got my See You Fridays, a uh, wonderful uh, young adults group um, that I do Friday nights. Um, I got an awesome little church over here in the hood. Uh, it's my friend's church, uh, his family. Uh, First Aurora Christian, and uh, I, I'm just I'm plugged in wherever I can be at. You know, I do a lot of outreach stuff. I'm gonna try to get everybody else involved uh, as I go here. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think I've seen I'm Not Ashamed six times, Paul. I think, but it's it's really hard. I don't want to ever watch it again. But I keep telling people that I'll watch it with them. Um, you know, just to help them out there. Let's see. God bless y'all. Oh, thank you, um, Shannon. That's really nice. Um, I don't always feel like it. Uh, I've been very reclusive uh, the past like couple months just due to some life situations. Um, so... Um, you know, I, I'm trying to not recluse and be the introvert because I am an ambivert. I think that's how you say it, ambivert. Um, extroverted and introverted. So it's very easy for me to just be comfortable with nobody around and everything. Um, as you can see, I'm focusing on my paintings. Uh, that's an I'm Not Ashamed painting inspired behind me. It's oil. Uh, it's taking some time. That's for Nisi Davies. She'll be very happy to see that when she watches this. Um, yeah, I got a few other paintings over here. Let's see. I don't want to give too much away, but, you know, like... Uh, hey, yo. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, God bless you, Amber. Thank you. Uh, my art show will be May 5th at the House of Ware. Um, I will be posting flyers here very shortly. Um, Oliver, you're welcome. It's going to be a passion series. It's going to be all uh, in black and white. Um, I also am going to have my friend Javon, um, a good friend of mine. Um, he's going to be doing some paintings. A couple of those paintings were his. This is his little studio I'm sitting in. Uh, it's got a leaky roof, so i got to be careful not to get this on my laptop. Hi, Dana. <laughs> I miss you guys today. Love you. I hope Bethany told you that. Um, let's see here. Also, I'm going to be sharing some artwork um, that has never been seen before. Um, that was done by me and Rachel, actually. Uh, and just a lot of big things in the future. Um, like I said, uh, just just stay posted and keep an eye out for um, the journal readings. That should be very shortly. Um, like I said, I've just been caught up doing this show. Also, I'm writing a book. And uh, hi, Dana. Hi. That's my other sis. Be tight. Um, yeah, I'm writing a book right now, which. It was very hard to start writing. I, I don't know if any of you were in a, written, a, written a book, but I kept starting out, like, telling everybody, like, I was born in Denver, 1978, yada, yada. And I kept doing this for, like, months. Instead of just, like, writing what I want to talk about when I want to talk about it and my buddy kind of pointed that out so I, I based the first part of it uh, about second John um, and just that if you know love uh, you know God and um, just that I started on this rant and then he's like hey that should be like the intro to your book um, because yeah, you know obviously I'm all about love and all about peace um, oh, we miss you I miss you Dana I miss everybody there. Um, we'll all have to like uh, catch up soon. 
So, um, yeah, I, I hope this Facebook Live was good for all you guys. You guys got any questions or anything um, before I get out of here? Because I'm going to go meet a friend and play some disc golf and probably go visit her grave um, and say hi. I never go today um, as it's always really hard. It's a very personal thing, but uh, I guess I was missing her extra today. Um, and so, yeah. Um, let's see here. <laughs> kind of want to read you guys something else. You guys want that? <laughs> All right. Let's see here. I'm such a slacker, those who know me, uh, that make plans. Obviously, my Facebook Live was like a uh, half hour late. So, I'm sorry, Patrick, if you're watching this. Um, I will hit you up here shortly. Um, I haven't been to the Columbine Memorial uh, in 15 years. So, I might have to visit that as well. Alright, let's see. I kind of want to like be secretive about the journals, they're very personal to me, but you know, it is uh, the 18th anniversary of her death and there's no better way to honor her than um, sharing about her life. I'm in one of my art studios. Uh, my buddy just built this on the back of his house, and because uh, I got a show here in about two weeks, I think. And so I just trying to paint as much as possible. Let's see here. Um, thanks, Dana, for encouraging me. I always feel like a geek here. Talk. I feel like I'm talking to myself because I'm looking at myself. You know, I just shaved my head, by the way. I've had a mohawk, those of you didn't know. And I had a weird mustache. It's in my profile picture. And I just had to look different today. I look crazy right now, so. Stay here. Whoop. Don't worry, it'll grow back. <laughs> um, let's see here. Alright, this is. This one, um. This one is very special to me, uh, this, this entry, because I was very, I was, like I said, a year ago, um, when I shot that heroin, and I was dying, basically, um, it's very self-loathing and very in a bad place. Mm -hmm. Just leading up into that, I was very, just not wanting to live anymore. I knew the movie was coming out, I was trying to get right, um, I was doing my best um, to just uh, get myself healthy, but there was just no positive outlets, everything seemed so hopeless, and so I was in such a dark place, I was in such a very, uh, just, just a hole if you will, a uh, very, very dark place, and um, very suicidal. I remember telling Niecy Davies, uh, that is uh, one of the producers of the movie, um, me and her were communicating, um, she's, she commissioned me for this painting, which obviously is almost done, um, happy birthday Niecy by the way, um, but uh, I, was, I was talking to her and just telling her how hopeless I felt and how I wanted to give up, and, um, and I was very serious. Um, and she reminded me, she said, hey, Mark, well, do you remember that time you saved Rachel from killing herself? And it was like Rachel was speaking to me beyond the grave, which was very crazy. Um, I don't know. 
you know, this is a lady I never met in person at this point, and uh, she was in Nashville, and she had to translate the journals, basically, uh, from cursive to... Thank you, Dana. Um, I love you guys, too. I'm sorry I couldn't be there today, you know. Um, but, you know, us boys are stubborn. <laughs> I love you guys so much. Um, you guys are my other family and forever, you know, Rachel. I love all you. But, uh, basically, I was very suicidal, and I was telling Nisi this, and she's like, do you remember when you saved Rachel from suicide? And, um, it just hit me like a ton of bricks, because it was just like, wow, like, I did, because I didn't remember. Like I said, I, I didn't read these until I was at the movie premiere in Nashville a few months back for the first time in its entirety and I was sobbing like a little a little child in the lobby of the hotel in the early hours of the morning um, so this is what Rachel wrote to me um, when she was struggling with suicide herself because like I told you she was a very real person it's Monday the 16th um, I don't know this was. Um, I can figure it out, though. All right, it says, Dear Mark, thank you so much. You didn't need to write me back. That painting said it all. All I needed was for someone to share my pain, someone to feel my heart hurt. You did something most people wouldn't do. You helped me carry the burdens of others. I stayed home from school today. I was going to kill myself. I was going to bring my car into the garage, close the door, and let the motor run. I got as far as the driveway, and then I turned off the car. I was going to live for just one more day, so I could say goodbye to you. I got there, and then we started praise and worship. I, and this is, this is uh, she went to our breakthrough, um, our youth group at the time. So she actually went, she's like, uh, so she came to say goodbye to me one more time. I got there, and when we started to praise and worship, I lifted my hands and closed my eyes, and because I wanted you to think I was okay so that when I died, you wouldn't blame yourself. Then Mike Tatu told that story, and I lost it. Finally, I was on the altar crying harder than I ever had before, and Lori Johnson was holding me. I repented and made a decision to live. I feel so fulfilled. There is a God, and I'm going to serve Him for the rest of my life. Mike was right. Something happened. God showed me, saved me from suicide. He did it through Mike, through Lori, and through you. Your love gave me reason to live just for one more day. And His love, meaning God's, gave me a reason to live for one whole life. But that's not the end. I'm working at Subway again, and I have been smoking pot and cigarettes. I went in on my way home, and I broke every cigarette I had. I told the guy, Brandon, that was working, that I gave my life back to God, and that I am clean. Then I, to he, uh, then I told him he should do the same. He said, maybe. This is the day of redemption, revelation. I will never be the same again. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. I love you. Rachel Joy. And then a big I love you. And a little flower. Because those of you know me, um, I love writing like little flowers to people and things like that. Um, if you guys don't know the subway story, um, those guys were like pushing, pushing her to do drugs and stuff, and uh, I, I, it's in the special features where I tell the story where I went up there and acting all tough, and um, I thought I was so cool, and then Rachel was like, now go invite him to church, and <laughs> yeah, I don't know, oh Rachel, I miss her. Um, there's not a second that goes by, I don't miss her. I've lost 45 people, I believe, um, 
since I was born, including both my parents, um, countless friends to drugs, suicide, murder, and Rachel is the only one I miss every day, without a doubt. Um, if I could leave you guys with something, I just want to say that uh, we all should carry um, the legacy of love and compassion to everyone. Uh, not just people who are like you, because clearly I was very different from Rachel. I grew up in the city. Um, I grew up rough, and um, you know, at first glance, you know, not a lot of people come up and talk to me. I mean, you know, I am a big softy. Um, love you, Zach, man. Um, uh, so, I mean, if we can do her justice, you know, it's it's really not focusing so much on her death. The death is the catalyst to um, really, you know, um, showing us how she lived and who she was. Um, I think the movie did a great portrayal of that. Um, and, you know, don't don't wait for somebody else to help somebody else don't wait uh, to reach out to that person you might think or is hurting um, don't be quiet you know about telling somebody you love them because you never know that that might be the last moment you get to tell them that and I've learned this lesson the hard way many times with my mother with my aunt you know uh, I told Rachel I loved her all the time, but, you know, the last time I told it to her, I didn't know that was going to be the last time, and, you know, I just, uh, want to thank all you guys for watching, and, uh, just all your love, all your support through everything, um, it really means the world, and, um, you know, <laughs> stay tuned for all the wonderful things I got going on. Um, to share with you because like I said I really want to share Rachel's life with you and who she was and her character and um, hopefully we can uh, just spread some love and everything and uh, you know thank you all you guys for the support of watching the movie um, and spreading the word about the movie um, as well as spreading about my page and everything else uh, all my names are there's a thousand different names uh, in the movie I'm Mark Bodiford and the credits, uh, I'm Mark Pettit in the interview, I'm Nathan Ballard as a character, I'm Mark Alive in real life, um, so, you know, I'm just Mark, I'm just me, Rachel's big bro, and, um, yeah, you know, I'm gonna show you this, Ugh. Ugh. So, you know, I got this the day after she died. She was the light in my darkness, you know. This whole arm's like black and gray and a bunch of demons and stuff. And told her I'd never get a girl's name. So, I mean, she was the first. I do, I do let every ex tattoo my ankle and cross out the last one. It's called the Anklet of Exes right by my Justin Bieber tattoo. I do have a Justin Bieber tattoo. That's a whole nother time. <sighs> Thank all you guys for your support and love today. Uh, it's a very hard day. Um, just go out and love somebody. Um, you know, spread that love. That's, that's all we can do. And Thank you so much. I'm glad a lot of you have added me and uh, continue to communicate with me. Sorry I'm a slacker and getting back to people, but I do have like 30 people that hit me up a day, um, and it's it's pretty crazy. So I do try to be genuine and get back to everybody, um, and I'm just me, you know. So love me, hate me, whatever. I'm here, and I'm gonna love you. So <laughs> thank you for watching. Um, God bless, and uh, thank you again. Let's see. Make sure I didn't miss anything here. I miss your face, Zach. We should get together. I love you. You definitely are my favorite cousin. And thank you all for uh, telling me I'm doing a good job because I totally feel like a dweeb right now.
Bye, y'all. Have a blessed day.